Most of us hope that the impact we have in the world, mm. either through our work or our relationships, will live on after we die, at least for a short period of time. However, some people create a legacy that lives on for many hundreds of years, and Da Vinci is one such person. Born in 1452 in Italy, Leonardo da Vinci is best known for being an artist and engineer. You'd struggle to find someone on the street who didn't recognize his Mona Lisa or the Last Supper paintings. I for one grew up having dinner at my grandma's with the Last Supper painting hanging on the wall. Oh yeah. But da Vinci's renaissance genius didn't stop at painting and tinkering. He's also considered a revolutionary anatomist. At the time, it was believed you should only draw humans as they appear in nature. In other words, it's okay to outline muscle provided it was covered in skin. Da Vinci's interest in anatomy began with his love of art. Wanting to improve his craft, he began looking at naked bodies and human skulls to enhance the accuracy of his drawings. Although, between us, I believe his interest in looking at naked bodies was not just artistic, okay? It's thought that while living in Milan in the 1490s, this interest had moved more into the realm of science. In Milan, anatomy was mostly a medical pursuit rather than an artistic one. Initially, he focused on anatomical studies of the muscles and skeleton, but Milan's architectural impressiveness soon sparked an interest in the proportions of the human body. Using young men as models, he produced more than 40 drawings and 6,000 words on the average size of human body parts, the space between features like the mouth and the base of the nose, and much more. These studies were the basis for his famous Vitruvian Man drawing, also known as the proportions of the human body according to Vitruvius. So now you know that Da Vinci was not looking to show us the science behind jumping jacks. Yeah. Da Vinci had a passion for dissection, but he mostly dissected animals. It was only when he got his hands on human corpses that some amazing discoveries were made. Over his lifetime, he dissected around 30 corpses. Dissection at this point in history was tricky business. Without refined embalming techniques and the ability to freeze bodies, you had to act fast because bodies, as you know, have a fast expiration date. Determined not to let these challenges get in the way, he came up with some genius solutions, let me tell you. He used molten wax to define the cerebral ventricles, made a glass model of the heart so he could study it long after decomposition, and came very close to understanding how blood flowed through the body. He also detailed coronary sinuses, a staggering 200 years before they were given the name. Through his dissections, he came to understand how tendons and muscles connect to the skeleton, the structure of human organs, and much more. He was the first scientist to depict the curvature of the human spine accurately. Later in the 1510s, Da Vinci gained a new obsession, this time with the workings of the human heart, producing detailed drawings of the organ complete with the four chambers. By dissecting an ox's heart, he discovered that the aortic valve opens and closes to ensure blood can only flow in one direction. His work on animals told him where to look in humans. In 1506, he had the opportunity to dissect a 100-year-old man who he just witnessed died peacefully. Can you imagine? He probably just stood there waiting long hours to see if the poor guy would just walk towards the light so he can study him. With this dissection, he was particularly interested in looking at the process of dying. How organs change in the moments, hours, and days after death. Yeah, creepy but incredibly useful for science. Da Vinci's drawings are uncannily accurate in many ways, but he did get a few things wrong. His drawings of the reproductive system and particularly the female reproductive system contained several errors. For example, he believed the penis was connected to the spinal cord in males, and the uterus was linked to the breasts via a canal in females. In this drawing of the fetus, the placenta looks much more like a cotyledonary placenta, the type of placenta we find in ruminants like cows, sheep, deer, and goats. 
Human placentas form a single large area of contact between the maternal and fetal vascular systems. However, in ruminants, instead of one large wall of placenta, they have several smaller and round placentae. We can't be 100% sure why Da Vinci constructed his drawings this way, but we can make some educated guesses. Firstly, it's important to remember the time in which Da Vinci lived. Today, we use the scientific method to ensure our biases don't skew the results of what we're studying. However, in 1493, when Da Vinci was penciling these reproductive drawings, evidence-based medicine was very much in its infancy. The anatomists who came before Da Vinci, like the Roman physician Galen, merged science and philosophy. Galen believed the body was governed by four humors. Blood, yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm. You became sick when one of these humors were out of balance. Although this theory seems absurd in its randomness today, it was widely believed for a long time. Galen's ideas on the human body influenced medicine for over 1500 years. That is, until Da Vinci came along. Secondly, it's thought Da Vinci didn't have much access to human female corpses, so it makes sense that he would try to fill in the gaps. How did he fill in these gaps? Well, with his knowledge of female cow anatomy, since cows were much easier to get hold of for dissection. At the time, most of the bodies available for dissection were unclaimed bodies, usually those of vagrants and drunks who were outcasts in society. Most of these unclaimed bodies were men. And lastly, it's thought he applied some of the dominant philosophy of the time to his drawings. He depicted the penis being linked to the spinal cord in males because he believed that males passed on a part of their brains during reproduction. In a 16th century understanding of the world, women were passive recipients rather than active agents in the reproductive process. Except, of course, a few of Henry VIII's wives who selfishly decided not to give him a male heir and paid the price with divorce and their head. And that was all of them. Despite a few errors, one thing is clear. Da Vinci's drawings were beyond his time and forever changed the course of medicine. The Greek and Roman understanding of the human body was discarded in favor of Da Vinci's sharp take on the body as a mechanical machine with intricate moving parts. His work influenced the anatomists that came after him, and many of his drawings still hold up today. So tell me, what's your favorite Da Vinci's anatomical drawing? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video if you would like to see more of these in this channel. Hit the subscribe button and notification icon so you don't miss the new videos I will be publishing here. I will see you next time.